I first encountered 8-Bit Adventures 2 in a Twitter post. And to, and to properly set this up, I should say that I see a lot of indie games on my social media. I'm in that circle, you know, screenshot Saturday. I'm in there. I peruse. I send words of encouragement. I add games to my Steam wish list. But what is the quality? This is what I'm interested in. What is the quality that makes me stop scrolling and go, oh, let me show you the screenshot specifically of 8-Bit Adventures 2 that got me to stop scrolling. Oh, mama, look at this guy. Beaming Inferno shows off its grinning personality. Powering up. What do those words mean? Doesn't matter. Forget about them. Look at this guy. Gritty vibes off the charts. He's already gotten through this whole town. Burned every building. He's on his way out. We're the only thing that can stop him. This screenshot makes me want to play this game. And the screenshot is, I think, striking. And I gotta tell you, I think a lot of screenshots of this game of 8-Bit Adventures 2 are striking. And that's the word I want to use today. So first off, when you look up, this game, what is this game? 8-Bit Adventures 2. I would guess that you're gonna find a lot of people talking about how it's nostalgic, how it's a love letter to the golden age of RPGs. And I wanna start this off here just by saying that's great, but I I, I don't care. I I don't like a lot of old games. I'm, I'm here for this. I'm here now. I'm not here because I go, oh, this reminds me of a game I Chrono Trigger. So I just want to make clear there's a lot I like about this game, and I don't think you need to, you know, apologize for making any decisions that are maybe rooted in the past. Now, for those that don't know me, I'm Jake Steinberg. I am a writer, so I like to talk about the intersection of video games and storytelling. But let's get some basics out of the way that I want to mention first, and then we will get to that. So, like, first off, the art style, that screenshot, it's consistent consistently striking. I feel like there are more details than you would expect in this kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, basic art style. And there's a lot of twists on biomes that you might be more or less familiar with. You know, you're in the desert, you're in the forest, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of twists there that I think go a long way in making them unique and specific. And it does the exact same thing with enemy design. There's just a lot here that makes me stop and go, oh. So similarly, the music, I think the music is striking. Check this out. This is just when you start the game. And then listen to this one. Listen to this one now. But the thing I want to talk about the most with 8-Bit Adventures 2, I think, and what I find most striking about it is actually the writing. Um, now, the story itself, like the plot, like what happens, I think it's very campy, heartfelt, melodramatic, very larger than life uh, in the way that I think a lot of us are used to with RPGs. But this game, I think, does such a good job in always giving the player a short-term and a long-term goal. You're pretty much properly motivated for every second of the game, and I think that's a real gift for pacing and it makes it seem like you're always accomplishing a task. And I know sometimes when I play RPGs, you're like, you have to get involved in a whole world, right? A whole big world. This game even has a two at the end of it. It's a sequel and I didn't play the first one. But I think something that this game does really well is that it introduces you to you to a character. And again, larger than life, kind of like in, in big swaths tells you this is who the type, the type of person you are, what's important to them, what they're trying to accomplish. And it does this in like a very organic way where it doesn't feel like needless exposition just to give you the information that you need to know. This is kind of like a silly example too, but uh, speaking of exposition, very funny thing. I thought this was very clever. At the very beginning of the game, I guess there are characters who maybe you could have named in the first title and they play a role in this one. So the 
way that the game has you give those characters the player selected names is that you're like a kid in class taking a test about the history of the world you are in. And you're like, oh, what was the name of this person? What was the name of that person? Like on your test. And that's how the game is feeding you information about who these people are, how you know them, that kind of thing. Very, very cute, very clever. And while I think the story is fun and engaging and it does a good job of keeping you playing, I think what I like the most are kind of the more narrative design elements, the storytelling tricks that this game engages with and how it does a good job of constantly serving up like a setup and a punchline. So for example, really early in the game, I'm trying not to spoil anything as we talk here, but I guess I'm gonna spoil a few things later. But for now, very beginning of the game, the tutorial, right? You're kind of getting the overall combat tutorial and it's from this, this very strong commander, this leader, this guy you look up to. And when you're doing it, when you're doing your attacks on this guy and he's teaching you how things work, I noticed very quickly that I was not going to kill this guy. This guy was stronger than me. Which makes sense because he's giving us the tutorial, he's got a higher rank than us, he should be stronger than us. So it totally makes sense. You know, in a lot of games, I think you get the tutorial and because you're the player, you get to win the battle. No matter who it is you're fighting, you always get to win. The player always gets to win. But here, the point was to teach us. So they go, okay, this strong guy, you're not gonna whittle his health all the way down. Don't worry about it, we're, we're done. We're, we're stuck with this tutorial. But soon after that, you have to fight that guy for real. And I think what I like about this, right, is that if the tutorial let us beat that guy the first time for the sake of letting the player know that they did the correct thing, it would not have served as scaffolding, as setup for later in the game, shortly after, where that guy is kind of treated as a mini boss. By us not being able to get close to beating him in the tutorial, that actually empowers him as a boss moments later when we're fighting him again. And it's like, oh my God, I gotta, now there are stakes, I gotta beat this guy. And I know he's tough because my attacks were not hurting him that bad before. That's really cool storytelling. I love that kind of thing. And this game engages in that constantly. Set up, punchline, set up, punchline. Good job. Good job. So I think when I talk about the quality of something being striking, I notice something. I think I'm noticing it because it's not taking anything for granted. It's making specific, deliberate, creative choices. I think that this game, this indie game, 8-Bit Adventures 2, is doing almost exactly what you want an indie game to do because it feels authored. It feels like there is an authorial hand writing each one of these sequences, making them specific and purposeful. It is the exact opposite of the kind of thing that you maybe in a, in, a, in a way that is pessimistic might expect from a game that was more or less made by committee. So as we start wrapping things up here, I think I wanted to make this video just to put this game on people's radar in case they had not heard of it before. But I think honestly, it's a lot of like what I want out of an indie gaming experience. Because while the story makes like some choices that maybe I wouldn't have made or I don't think are like the most effective choices that could have been made, I think that their structure and their storytelling style is more or less very sound. And I think it's this specificity these specific choices being made with intention, with purpose. I think at the end of the day, that is so much what makes this game striking to me. You know what I mean? You look at something like, uh, there are no random battles in this game. Every single one is placed, purposeful, intentional. It's like somebody was in there controlling almost every element of this game from beginning to end. And um, I just think if you're somebody who is just generally trying to say, oh, am I gonna pick this game up or not? I played it on my Nintendo Switch. I thought it was a great handheld game on that OLED screen. Absolutely loved that. And uh, I'm not like the biggest RPG combat connoisseur, but the thing I appreciated about it, just my general impression, if you're curious about that, is that I felt that the uh, characters were really distinct. And it was one of these games where maybe like you need to experiment and you need to check out all of your different party members to see what they're good at and what they can do. And the biggest challenge for me, I think my biggest hurdle was sometimes I just like didn't know how to be most effective. And that kind of got under my skin, right? Like there, like there's times where I'm like fighting a big bad enemy and I'm like, brother, I, 
I don't know how I'm ever going to beat you, but but you RPG heads out there, that's probably not going to be a uh, concern at all. So I'm still playing, I should say. I have not finished 8-Bit Adventures 2 yet. I am still playing. Uh, I've got like more than 20 hours into it on my Nintendo Switch and it's still going so it looks like it's a pretty long game But uh, you know everybody's talking about everybody's talking about your dragon quests your dragon ages And I think that this is a honestly really good alternative if you are looking for that handheld game for your Nintendo Switch So much variety you're going through deserts you're going through jungles there there's a there's a courtroom scene that I think is doing Ace Attorney. I think it's doing a bit. I don't know, but it's a good time. Uh, 8-Bit Adventures 2, check it out. Or don't, I don't know. Thanks, thanks for watching all this, I guess. I'm gonna play the music again.